What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Once again, it is that time of the week that I read to you the beloved Glassnode Insights weekly newsletter of on-chain activity with Bitcoin and some Ethereum like last week. Before we get into that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up and leave me a comment as you're going through this video, any point after, during, whatever, leave me a, up, a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Let me know what you really think, okay? I'm totally open to any sort of criticism whatsoever. Just my one request is to please be civil in your discourse. That being said, uh, go down into the description as well. There's a bunch of cool links for all kinds of other interesting things that I find interesting. And if you're watching this channel, maybe you and I think similar enough that you might like these things too. So let's get into it. This week's week 33, the coin maturity gauntlet. During the recent capitulation event, Bitcoin migrated from weaker hands to those stepping in at the lows. This edition, we explore how we can assess the migration of conviction by use of coin age bands. The Bitcoin market continues its recent rally higher in conjunction with other risk assets in light of a deceleration of inflation in prints. Of inflation prints. Bitcoin prices continue to consolidate within a range, but traded up from the lows of 22,789 to a high of 24,974. In this week's edition, we shall explore the maturity gauntlets. This is the maturation process of BTC holdings with invest inside investor wallets. Generally, longer hold times signify improving odds of a higher conviction and cost insensitive owner. After such a deep capitulation, we are seeking to characterize out who sold and who stepped, up in, stepped in at the lows. We shall explore this concept by via the concept of lifespan, which is coin age, and supply dynamics for both young and old coins across BTC and USD denominated wealth bands. We'll also dive into a study of spending behaviors of long-term and short-term holders to assess coin ownership as the dust begins to settle. Expansion in maturity. The amount of supply that has been dormant for at least one year can be used to provide insight into the cyclical nature of Bitcoin through distribution and accumulation cycles. Distribution cycles are a characteristic of a bull market as the incentive to realize value increases for participants with mature coins. This leads to a reduction of one year old supply as coins are spent and sold. Accumulation cycles are a characteristic of bear markets as the magnitude of potential profit wanes alongside a collapse in price. Hodling gradually becomes the primary dynamic. This leads to an increase of supply older than one year. Currently, supply active, uh, supply active of one plus years sits just below the previous all-time high set in May 2022 at 65%. This highlights the significant conviction of the May to June 2021 buyers after the great miner migration. The equilibrium over the last three months indicates that coin maturation is in balance with spending. This is, uh, this is, can be, okay, I guess that's a typo right there. This can be considered a constructive mechanic, uh, mechanic within a bear market. That last sentence threw me off there. This phenomena can be further inspected by isolating coins from the HODL waves age bands of six months to three years. HODL waves provide insight into volume of BTC held for at least a minimum duration, which provides a proxy for analyzing buyers from the 2020 to 2022 cycle, many of whom are likely experiencing their first bear market cycle. From the six month to 12 month bands, we can see uh, to expand most the great miner migration as hodlers refuse to sell at the lows. This supply swell coincides with a bottoming in supply active to one year plus ago. Within a hodler dominant regime, 
supply was able to mature, leading to a swelling of the one to two year age bands following the November 2021 all time high. The realized cap hodl waves can then be used to assess the USD wealth held in these same age bands. Here we can see an even more intriguing result where overall USD value held in these cohorts has surged by 52%, now accounting for 63% of the realized cap. The price and sensitivity of the smart money cohort can be highlighted by the continued increase, which suggests minimal spending and investors allowing held BTC to mature regardless of price appreciation in November of 2021 and subsequent capitulation in May of 2022 to current. Smart money can be seen uh, to be in a structural uptrend expanding its USD wealth by 51% equivalent to a $220 billion increase culminating in a total balance of $267 billion. Therefore, 37% of the circulating supply, 7 million BTC, represents 63% of the network USD wealth based on that value at the time of acquisition, underscoring the relative economic weight of the cohort. Bitcoin cycles are driven by an ever-evolving supply balance between longer-term investors and newer speculative buyers. The R-HODL ratio distills this concept into an oscillator by comparing the USD wealth of one-week-old coins to those held by the one- to two-year-old cohort. This can be considered under the following framework. An uptrend in the R-HODL ratio suggests dominance of USD wealth held by new speculative buyers, which is typical of peak speculation and Bitcoin market ops. A downtrend in the R-HODL ratio indicates dominance of USD wealth held by older coins, suggesting increased hodling and long-term accumulation behavior. A flat range bound uh, R-HODL ratio indicates that the, rain, the rate of change between old and young dominance is at an equilibrium. This is, a trend, uh, this is a transition period, uh, which is often observed around market transition periods, such as distributive market tops and accumulation bottoms. Currently, we are seeing the R hodl ratio trade within a strong downtrend, confirming that the balance of USD wealth continues to shift back towards longer term patient holders. The long-term holder supply can then be uh, employed to provide an assessment of the behavior of holders whom have statistically higher conviction in the asset. Note that the 155-day threshold for long-term holder status brings us to the March 2022 region, where the price experienced the first post all-time high rally towards, towards $46,000. By observing the total supply held by the long-term holder cohort, we make two observations. Long-term holder supply has been range bound between 13.6 million to 13.27 million BTC since November of 2021 high, declining by just 300,000 BTC. Since the Luna sell-off in May 2022, long-term holders have seen a sustained decline in supply amounting to minus 150,000 BTC. Recent spending behaviors by long-term holder is currently larger in coin volume than the hodling from the pre-Luna consolidation zone. This results in a modest but observable, observable decline in held supply. Note that long-term holder supply does not need to aggressively decline for the cohort to be experiencing a, a capitulation event under the surface. Historically, long-term holder supply tends to trade only slightly lower during such events as the weakest of the cohort are flushed out and generally balanced by a more resilient accumulation that takes time to mature. Compression and Contraction When considering the circulating supply for Bitcoin, we can inspect it from three components, the long-term, short-term, and exchange-held supply. Beginning with ex exchange balances, exchanges continue to experience a macro decline in supply held with this trend developing since March 2020 capitulation event. Year to date, exchange outflows have continued with generally increasing intensity as prices declined. This underscores a persistent structural demand from both small and large investors for sovereign self-custodial assets. On balance, exchanges have seen a, uh, a net outflow of minus 100,000 BTC following the May 2022 Luna capitulation, which accounts for 3.2% of the total outflows since the March 2020 all-time high. 
Next, we can assess two other components held outside exchanges, the long-term and short-term holder supply. As discussed, long-term holder supply has seen a slight decline of minus 200,000 BTC since recording an all-time high in May of 2020, but remains effectively range-bound over the last 12 months. This highlights a relatively balanced inflow to outflow dynamic for this cohort. On the contrary, short-term holder supply continues to expand following a capitulation in price, leading to a supply increase of, of plus increasing 330,000 BTC. Since the May collapse of Luna, there has been a net transfer of uh, 300,000 BTC from the combined long-term holders and exchanges towards short-term holder holders given the accompanying price declines. This broadly describes a capitulation style event as the swelling sh uh, short-term high supply describes accumulation by buyers who stepped in during the flush out and now own coins with a much lower cost basis. Now it's called buying the dip. A constructive divergence. By definition, these coins were transferred into the short-term holder cohort since the March of March 8, 2020 Luna collapse. That's wrong, March 2022. There's quite a few typos in this one. Short-term holder supply increased by 330,000 BTC. Extreme short-term holder accumulation is normally concurrent with bull market topping formations. However, a few bear market examples stand out against this trend. The twin spikes of 330,000 BTC inflows, which punctuated the start and end of the 2015 bear market bottom, the April to July 2019 relief rally out of the bear market lows, the March 2020 capitulation event, the June 2022 sell-off below the last cycle $20,000 peak with a spike of 300,000 BTC. Short-term holders are normally adept at buying tops and selling bottoms. However, distinct footprint of the above described events can be considered an ex uh, exception to the trend. Both inflow events were in response to extreme down draws in price actions as well as severe short-term holder outflows following the bull market culminations. Such events describe a transfer of coins uh, to new buyers who are initially, whom are initially classed as short-term holders but have low cost basis but are rare in advan advantageous financial position to hodl from there on out. They are in a advantageous financial position because they bought it lower. Having established a case that this spike in short-term holder cohort coins likely describe bear market floor buyers, we can also see this captured in the BTC denominated supply balance for young coins less than three months. We can see supply peaks in 2015 times three to November 2018 and March 2020 and during our most recent sell-off. Simultaneously, these supply peaks tend to occur at the macro lows of young supply. This signals both a final flush out of sellers, followed by months of gradual accumulation and the withdrawal of coins from the actively traded market. I think that means coins leaving exchanges. The USD denominated wealth of the young coin cohort has been structural in structural decline following the March 2021 topping formation. This is a result of, the both, uh, of both the accumulation behavior allowing coins to mature, but also the revaluation of coins to cheaper and cheaper prices during the bear. A growing divergence can be identified between the aforementioned cohorts USD wealth realized cap hodl waves and their respective BTC denominated supply hodl waves. The spike in BTC denominated value is not reflected in the USD denominated chart. This is because while 300,000 BTC in coin volume was transferred, their USD realized value has declined from say 50 to $60,000 to 20,000, which is notably lower. This bolsters the case that we may very well have seen a meaningful capitulation take place in recent months. However, the onus is now on these new short-term holders holder bulls to hold the line. Are they waiting for the quick flip or are they gonna ride it out? In this newsletter, we assess the relative uh, distribution of supply and wealth for both young and old coins. To further understand the Bitcoin ownership structure, 
We established that the supply has undergone a significant transfer of wealth in recent months with an observable and widespread capitulation and thus equal and opposite accumulation. Long-term holder supply has seen a local modest decline as spending behaviors dominates following the Luna collapse. However, long-term holder supply remains relatively range-bound, which indicates more contained spending by a subset rather than broad loss of confidence. In contrast, short-term holders are seeing a divergence between BTC and USD denominated wealth. This is indicative of a pool of buyers who stepped in at the lows and now hold some 300,000 BTC acquired at a much lower cost basis. Now we turn to see if they have the conviction to hold on. What do you think about this? I really want to know. Hit me up in the comment section. Again, kindness and compassion. Be civil in your discourse. Smash that like button. Share with a friend if you like this. It's really easy. You can follow through with this. You don't have to take your time out of your day to, to, uh, to read this yourself. Hey, if you got that time, do it. But I'm here to help you out. I hope you all have a great one. Follow down the, the, the bunch of the links and stuff down in the description. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.